Today's lesson is going to be about friction. Friction is a resistive force. It always resists the direction of the motion or uh, attempted motion. So for example, if this box is moving this way, friction is going to try to slow it down and oppose that motion in this direction. So why does friction even exist? Well, imagine, you know, if you look at a surface, if you look at something, it looks like it might be smooth, right? However, if you look at it up close, you'll see that it's actually made up of, uh, you know, jagged edges. So even a smooth looking surface has all these edges. So as this object's trying to, say, slide past another object, say this object's trying to slide this way, right? Then uh, you can imagine that it's going to get caught in these little grooves here, and that's going to slow it down something was perfectly smooth you know it would just it would just keep moving there'd be no nothing that uh, affects it but when you have all these grooves here it's going to kind of slow it down you can actually imagine uh, how a lubricant would work if you take some kind of lubricant you know you put something in here it kind of fills in these little grooves and if we fill in these grooves all oh, that's going to essentially effectively smooth out the surface and now our two surfaces are going to have an easier time sliding by each other. So there's two main types of friction we're going to talk about in this class, static and kinetic. You can kind of see the root of these words. Static essentially means stationary. Kinetic is motion. So let's look at static first. Imagine we had like a refrigerator and we're going to try to push on that refrigerator. Well, I can push with a force and that refrigerator might not move. Well, why doesn't it move? Well, there's some friction, some static friction, opposing this motion in the opposite direction. So if I push with more force, give it a little bit more force, maybe it still doesn't move. And so there's still some static friction pushing back in the opposite direction. Well, eventually I'm gonna push enough, enough force where I've overcome that static friction and then, the, in this case, the refrigerator itself is going to start moving, right? It's going to begin accelerating, uh, say, to the right here, and it's going to begin to move. At that point, the um, static friction no longer exists, and so let's say it's moving this way. Static friction no longer exists, and now we would say there's some kinetic friction this way. It's called FK, and it's still hard for me to move it. So as I'm moving it, it's still kind of challenging for me to move it. Um, and that's because now of this kinetic friction. And in fact, if I were to let go and stop pushing it, the refrigerator would stop moving. And that's because the kinetic friction slows it down and stops it in this case. So you just completed a lab where you kind of inquired and investigated the variables that affect friction. Um, the two variables are going to be uh, the roughness of the surface, and this one's kind of obvious uh, if you imagine, uh, you know, a super smooth surface like we have here. It's going to be easy for this object to move past the other one. Uh, on the other hand, if you have a rough surface like this one we have over here, you know, it's going to get caught in the grooves. One of the surfaces is going to get caught in the grooves as it tries to move past it. It's going to be a lot harder. That one's a little bit obvious. Uh, the next one is uh, how hard surfaces push against each other. And so in this one, um, if you imagine in this situation right here, uh, these two objects, this is trying to slide this way, this maybe is going this way, uh, they're just kind of grazing the surface. It's a little bit easier for um, this one surface to pass by the other surface, whereas if they're being pushed against each other with more force, then um, there's more likely for these grooves to kind of get caught. You can see like right here, right here, the grooves are going to get caught with each other um, the harder you push down on this. Now in the lab itself, you did not investigate that directly, but indirectly you did. You looked at putting a mass on top of here, right? So if you put a big mass, if you put a huge mass on top, that's going to push down here. The table is going to push back up, and the greater the mass you put on top, the harder it's going to push against um, against one another. Let's take a look at surface roughness, roughness a little bit more uh, more detail. So we call the surface roughness the coefficient of friction and this is basically based on um, the roughness of both surfaces. 
so how hard uh, how rough both surfaces are so you can imagine you know if you had sandpaper on sandpaper that's going to be have a very high coefficient of friction if you had ice on ice that's going to have a very low coefficient of friction in fact i have we have ice on ice right here you can see ice on ice has, has a coefficient of like 0.1 um, that's a static friction kinetic friction is going to be 0.03 um, you can see where's a high one. Let's take a look right here. Rubber on dry concrete. Okay, that makes sense that we'd want to have a high coefficient of friction because, well, you don't want your car sliding down the road, right? The symbol we use for this is mu. Okay, it looks like a little U. It's a Greek letter. Uh, it does not have units here. Um, you pronounce this again as mu. So I do want you, one thing I do want you to notice, if you look at all these numbers here, okay, kinetic, static. Notice that the static friction is always, if you look here, always, or very close, I guess here they're basically the same, but in general it's always going to be larger. Mu s is going to be greater than mu sub k. And I want you to think about this question, why? Actually, if you could, why don't you pause the video here and think about why is mu s greater than mu k? So go ahead and pause it now, answer that question, we'll come back to it. Actually, I think we're going to come back to it in class. So be ready, I'm going to ask about this in class. So the next thing we're going to look at is the normal force. Um, so remember I said the second factor was how hard these push against each other. So in class we looked at the weight, how much weight we put on top of this. Okay, or you investigated that. Well, notice uh, it's not really the weight itself. That's not the direct thing that causes this. What it really is is how hard these push against each other. And the way we're going to measure this is with the uh, normal force. That's why you see an N here. And so the normal force, remember, is the force. If this is my tabletop, this would be the normal force from the table to this bottom surface. But at this boundary here, there would be a normal force from the bottom surface pushing on the top surface. And that's what we call the normal force. So again, that's how hard they're pushing against each other. That's measured by the normal force. Um, if we do increase the weight here, right, if we have a big old W, then the bottom's going to push back up. So um, that's why in class, even though you were looking at the weight, um, that affected the normal force. But it is important to know that it's not necessarily always going to be the weight. And we're going to look at some situations in the future where this is true. Uh, the symbol we use, we're just going to use F sub N, so force normal. Uh, the units here are newtons because it is a force. Let's put it all together. So here's our friction equation. Um, so basically we have friction is equal to the surface roughness times the normal force. Uh, hopefully this makes sense to you. I mean, imagine if we have a rough surface, so if we increase the coefficient of friction, that means the surface is rougher, then the force of friction would also increase. Um, or on the other hand, if we increase how hard the surfaces push against each other, in other words, we increase the normal force here, then as well the force of friction would increase. So they're both nice direct relationships. So I did get this image off of Google uh, Google Images. Want, there is an error here, so here's the error. The static friction equation actually is not equal. It's going to be less than or equal to. So why? Again, why don't you think about why is that true? And I kind of talked about it earlier in the video. If you were to rewind way, way back to the beginning and think about um, why is it less than or equal to. So go ahead and write down your thoughts. I think what I'll do is, again, I'll just not answer that question here. Wait till we get to class to see the answer to that. So that's it for the video. Next one, I'm going to do uh, some calculations for you, some examples of these.